Alright, this should be finishing up chapter 3. Alright, so we want to talk about some counting values. So, things that you would be familiar with would be a dozen. And if we have a dozen, that means that we have 12 things. It could be a dozen donuts, it could be a dozen shoelaces, it could be a dozen pencils. Another one that you may have heard on is a ream. And a ream is 500 things. And typically we think about paper when we're talking about a ream of paper. But it really could be a ream of anything. Well, in chemistry, since we deal with atoms, and atoms are very, very small, we use a term called a mole. And we abbreviate that M-O-L. So taking off the E makes it so much shorter, right? So a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. And that's kind of a big, long thing, and they've given this a name, and this is called Avogadro's number. Okay, so Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things, and that's how many things that you would have in a mole. So if I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd silver atoms, then I would have one mole of silver. I could have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of a compound, and that would represent one mole of that compound. I could also have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units if I have an ionic compound. But it doesn't matter if we're talking about atoms, molecules, or formula units. All of those have the same number of things in one mole. So that means we have a conversion factor that we can use, and that is one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. So that's going to be a conversion factor that we're going to use. So let's say that we have 0.75 moles of phosphorus. And we want to know how many atoms that is. So 1 mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Moles would cancel. And I would take 0.75 times 6.022 to the 23rd. Okay, and on my calculator, I'm going to take 0.75 times 6.022, and I'm going to use my exponent button, 23. All right, and 0.75 only has two significant figures, so I'm going to get only two in my answer. So 4.5 times 10 to the 23rd phosphorus atoms. And this wouldn't matter if this was phosphorus or tungsten or silver or lead because that's the same number all the time. Now I could go backwards. So let's say they give me atoms of tin, and they want me to find moles, I would use the same conversion factor, but it's going to be flipped this time, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole of tin. Atoms cancel, and now this time I would be dividing. So I'm going to take 1.8 to the 24th divided by 6.022 to the 23rd. And this time 1.8 has two significant figures, so I'm going to get two significant figures. And the 9 is going to make that 2 round up 3.0 moles of 10.
Alright, now last video we talked about the average atomic masses, those decimal numbers that are on the periodic table. And that atomic mass tells me the number of grams that I have if I have a mole. So, for example, let's say we're going to choose chlorine. And chlorine is 35.453. So that means for chlorine, there would be 35.453 grams would be equal to 1 mole. Which is 6.022 times 10 to 23rd things. Uh, if I had aluminum, then I would look up aluminums, and it is right here 26.982. So 26.982 grams is how much one mole is. Okay, and these atomic masses are also called molar masses. So the average atomic mass, we said, was the mass of one mole. And the mass of one mole is called the molar mass. Chemists are not very creative with their definitions. Molar mass, mass of a mole, right? And that's the same thing as that average atomic mass. All right, so let's say that we had oh, 2.4 moles of aluminum, we'll say. And we want to know how many grams that is. Okay, so in one mole of aluminum, the number of grams is the molar mass. And we already looked up the molar mass for aluminum. Read it written here, which is 26.982. So 26.982 grams of aluminum are in one mole. So I'm going to take 2.4 times 26.982. And I got 64.75. Okay, and I get two significant figures because of the 2.4. So we'll call this 65 grams. Okay, well, let's go backwards. And this time, we're going to start out with 1.09 grams. Nope, we're going to do 1.09 kilograms of, we'll say, phosphorus. Alright, so we're going to need several conversion factors. The first one I'm going to need is that there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. One kilogram. Uh, since I'm trying to go to moles, I know for phosphorus, when I look on the periodic table, there are 30 0.974 grams in one mole. Okay, so in one kilogram, one kilogram is 1,000 grams. And the kilograms would cancel. And then the 30.974 grams, so it has to go on the bottom to cancel. And one mole. So my units cancel and I'm left with moles, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to take 1.09 times 1,000 times 1. 1090. And then on the bottom, I took 30.974 times 1, and I got 30.974. And 
And then I'm going to simply divide those two numbers. I got, so I took 1.09 times 1 times 1,000. Then I took that number and divided by the 30.974. And 30.974 has like five significant figures. 1.09 has three, so we're going to go with three. So 35.2 moles of phosphorus. All right, so we had two conversion factors that we learned today. The first one is a mole is this many things. The other conversion factor that we had is that molar mass. So that is that number off the periodic table. That's how many things are in for one mole. And for each element, that would be whatever that atomic weight is. So the atomic weight is how many grams are in one mole. Alright, and that's the end of chapter 3.